and I started just painting what I want. Uh, it's, it's still something that I battle with because there's so many styles that I like and I try to combine them all. But uh, at the end, I think it's it's a, for me, it was the, the, the most valuable lesson I could have learned from my artist to paint what I want on my walls. And um, if I can get that right, there would be other people that would share the same views as I do. And it happened. Good morning, Sebastian. It's so lovely to meet you here on Zoom. Oh, thank you. What an honor to be uh, interviewed by you. And thank you very much for the opportunity. It's a great pleasure. And it's so lovely to see you there amongst your artwork. Are you in your studio? Yes, uh, I'm currently in the studio. I'm on the floor. I'm actually sitting on the floor because I've noticed if I put the camera too high, you don't see the, oh, the view of my of my studio. So I've got yeah. my drawing desk and uh, my memorabilia and books and everything on the right and my easel with my paintings on the left. It's amazing. I mean, it's... Um your work i've seen your work on instagram as well and and i absolutely love what you do and tell me about your art where did it start for you uh, were you already uh, drawing at a young age yes i mean like all children i've uh, I've, I've been drawing since i you know i can remember I've, I've got books from when i was four years old or three years old where i uh, drew is just um i kept on drawing uh, where a lot of children would stop i just kept on drawing it was something that fascinated me so it's a language that i understood well um so yeah and it just continued um, after that uh yeah well after school it's it's actually where uh, i parted ways a little bit but i came back to it eventually but in school, did you take art as a subject then as well? Yes, I did take art as a subject, but they don't really teach you how to paint. Uh, they don't teach you the the fundamentals of art at all. Uh, today's schools in South Africa, a lot of... In order to teach, you have to have papers, uh, which is a bit biased because most of your best artists don't have uh, qualifications and uh, they abroad at academies that don't give you legitimate papers so you know they usually take teachers that likes to draw or likes to paint and use them as an art teacher and um, at the end you don't really get the information that you needed uh, i certainly needed a lot of information that i didn't get in art class so um did you then study art after school or are you self-taught artist? No, I'm self-taught, um, yes. completely self-taught. Uh, no, I've studied graphic design. Um, it was the only um, uh, only path I could take that made sense at the moment because I knew the university, the art classes at university was just, you know, I didn't want to paste macaroni on canvas stuff like that so graphic design was the only logical step to take um uh, so yeah i've studied graphic design but now um can you or, or how do you find your your art you know how do you find your style did you have to look at a lot of other painters or or, or artists to to find that or was it something that came that evolved in you? No, unfortunately, I, you know, there's a lot of artists that I admire who, who gets a voice or a, a niche from the start. And I unfortunately wasn't one of those artists. Uh, I had to look at other artworks. I had to discover what's out there. So, you know, I've, uh, I've only started using the internet when I was about 22 years old and that's when I discovered the classical academies. Even though I knew a little bit about Da Vinci, and Michelangelo, I never knew there was classical academies out there in France and in New York that teach you how to paint uh, the the classical way or the 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 academic way. So, 
at that age, I uh, I had to teach myself. I had to try to figure out how to paint the classical method first. And then after that, try to discover my own voice, which it's a ongoing battle for me. <clears throat> so what is it that you enjoy or that, that you would say would be your style now? Um, everything, basically. I uh, I take a lot of inspiration from, you know, the classical artists, but I mm -hmm. try to uh, put a modern twist on it. I try to abstract my work a little bit. I like um, very muted tones uh, in my work. Uh, try to focus on atmosphere, uh, try to set a mood in, my, in each piece. Each piece of mine has his own mood that I try to capture. And um, I've moved into a more impressionistic painting style. For, so I've moved from the classical to more something more, a little bit more impressionistic. Um, and I like portraits, uh, figures. I study anatomy quite a lot. That is what I really enjoy. But I try to put all elements in my paintings uh, from figures. Uh, so there's figures, landscape, um, animals, uh, you know, nature. I try to combine everything in one painting. That's what I enjoy most. But now, do you um, look at something? So would you look at people, for example, and then just uh, from from your um, thought process, then then paint, or do you actually take pictures and paint from there? Well, um, it depends. It depends on what my uh, motive are in my painting. So usually I would read a good book. It uh, depends on what's the purpose of my painting. If it's a study, usually I would just take a photograph or I would have a model sit next to my easel and just do a quick study. It takes me about three hours to four hours. Uh, the same with nature, I would sometimes go out and do uh, some landscape paintings, uh, especially when the electricity is off, uh, I would oh, go yeah. out, use nature as my inspiration. Uh, and then sometimes I would read a good book and uh, I would have, you know, inspiration always catch me working, kind of thing, you know, as then I would gather a lot of information create like some sort of a mood board um, for for uh, what for the idea in my mind. And then I would do, of course, sketches, um, color studies and oils until I do the final oil painting. So I've got a whole process of how to achieve my oil paintings, especially when, you know, when an author, I, my dad wrote a book, so a few books, so when he commissioned me to do his front covers, I would literally do a whole task of a mood board, doing sketches, oil sketches to get the idea of what I want. And when that's approved, I would do the final oil painting. Oh, yeah. uh, so it's a whole process for me. <laughs> yeah. But now, where, where are you based in South Africa? In in the West Coast, uh, Friedenburg. It's a small town uh, in the west coast near cape town about 150 kilo kilometers from cape town but i would like to move a bit closer to cape town um, uh, here where i'm at the moment it's very peaceful uh, it's beautiful there's a time of the year where uh, the flowers grow so you get different color flowers it's almost like the the the, the tulips in the netherlands so you get different kind of flowers growing up here and it's beautiful and it's peaceful. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think if you can, if you can hear close, you can hear the birds outside of my house. Amazing. It's, uh, yeah, I'm in nature. It's an artist's dream, but uh, not the best place to market artworks. Oh, I see. Yeah, because yeah. You, you get now your inspiration then from nature. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, completely. I mean, as an artist, I, I walk a lot uh, in nature, so uh, and I draw a lot from nature. So that is my main inspiration. But uh, everything is nature. Figures, human figures are nature. 
portraits on nature. So, yeah. Amazing. But now in a, in South Africa, um, you were talking now about moving close to Cape Town. Um, how did you start initially to market your your paintings? I mean, there must have been some way that people started yeah. seeing what you are doing. Well, it's a, it's a, it didn't come easy. Uh, as for most artists, it doesn't come easy. It takes. I'm I'm a full time artist now for about ten years, and and it took a lot of trial and error. It's it's it, you know. I've, I always say that art takes you, takes you to the ground, and then you have to try and build up from there. And it, it for a lot of artists, it, it takes a lifetime to build a name. But I'm originally from Namibia, and uh, uh, when I started my art career, it was in Namibia. And uh, luckily, I knew a lot of people. I had a lot of people on Facebook. So when I started posting, I got a lot of uh, commissions through it. And um, but the thing about Namibia, it's limited. Uh, this population isn't that big, especially the uh, the the art collectors or the the art appreciators um, isn't that large. Uh, so I had to make that move to Cape Town. And uh, when I moved to Cape Town about five years ago, six years ago, I believe, I had to build up again from the start, trying to get new clients. And by that time, I didn't have Instagram. And so I had to go from gallery to gallery and, and market my work. And uh, sooner or later, I've got one or two uh, uh, interested friends i could say uh, actually family today uh mm -hmm. that has supported me ever since and um, each year my name grew and uh, i'm fortunate i've got I've, for the past three years i've been doing very very well mm -hmm. uh, i'm blessed in that in that matter and i made a lot of friends a mm -hmm. lot of friends that became family uh, and that has been look, taking care of me uh mm -hmm. I can't say enough about it. But yeah, it's, so it's it's a, mm. it's a slow process, basically. That's what I want to say. It's a slow, yeah. meticulous yeah. process, and you have to be very persistent and consistent and uh, try to take care of your health because that's something that would, uh, you know, if it's, when, when you plateau in life, it has a toll on your, on your health. And uh, I yeah. think that's something that I... Um, can't stress enough. Just take care of your health, and the rest will come. Mm. But it's yeah. always this, um, and, and this, this uh, uh, um, perception that some people have, and I've noticed it also during the pandemic that people think, "Oh, but you know, you're a musician, so you should be happy because you can play music, or you're an artist, so you should be happy because you you yeah. paint." But people don't realize that it is it it also takes a lot from you and it's it's almost it is your job to do that. So it's also um I think mentally you have to be um no. strong. And and like you say now, you had to work, work, walk from gallery to gallery to market your work. So it's not it doesn't come automatically. No. Um yeah. So no, no, it doesn't. Uh, I mean, it uh, depends on uh, who you have in life that mentors you. But I didn't have art artistic mentors. Like today, it's easy to get someone and ask them for advice. I didn't have that back then. So I had to, I had to do the, the old fashioned style. Um, and uh, yeah, but it takes time and it's hard work. I mean, besides that, you have to work. Uh, art, I've, I've, you know, I've got uh, family members that always said, "Yeah, but you're you're just painting. Well, your job is just a hobby." Yeah. You know, it's it's not just a hobby. Yes, fortunately, it's uh, you. If you enjoy what you do, you don't work a day in your life. But mm -hmm. like music. Uh, arts you have to practice you have to practice put in your hours um 
and a lot of those practices you don't get paid for. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's like an athlete that has to to uh, run the hundred meter all uh, over and over and over again just to improve it by a fim, fim the second. I don't know how you say yeah, that, yeah. but, but yeah. uh, you have to practice and you have to do the work and you don't always get paid for it. It's not an easy path. Um, and uh, this is also what most artists say is the marketing side is always the difficult side because it's not what you really, you know, it's, it's it, you want to do the art and you're not yes. in the business side of things. So do of you find course. that? Uh, of, I find that very difficult. Um, because I'm trying to go into the, you know, the YouTube mm -hmm. platform and uh, the Vimeo and the Skillshare, these platforms where I can share my skills and and uh, teach other artists or give other artists that has walked the same path as I have, have uh, teach them, uh, the, uh, you know, show the, or help them at least uh, so that they, they don't reinvent the wheel like the way I did. Yeah. Um, and I find that difficult because I like to paint and I like to draw and, and that's all I want to do. Uh, mm -hmm. Doing admin sometimes takes two or three days a week from me that I could have practiced my art. Uh, so the admin part isn't that easy and the marketing part, but I try to stay up you know top of that luckily i've got a wife uh that helps me now and again uh, mm -hmm. when she doesn't work so i've got a partner that sticks by me you know like, right. uh, mm -hmm. but now um that's uh, when you said now that you had to go and and or you sell sell your work um this must be very personal because you're painting something and and you you're giving something from yourself from your thought process is it difficult for you if you get rejected it was in the okay. beginning it was uh, extremely difficult i mean um that's the thing when you're a self-taught artist you try to to paint what others want okay. you know and so when you get rejected uh it you take it very personally and then you try to change your style and your genre to suit someone else's viewpoint. Um, and then later on, I accepted it. Um, I accepted the rejection. It, it really, it's, it's, uh, I think I've, uh, I, I take that as a learning curve or I would, uh, soothe myself by saying, well, it's not that person's taste. Um, yeah. And I started just painting what I want. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's still something that I battle with because there's so many styles that I like and I try mm -hmm. to combine them all. But uh, at the end, I think it's, it's a, for me, it was the, the, the most valuable lesson I could have learned from my artists to paint what I want on my walls. Mm -hmm. And um, if I can get that right, there would be other people that would share the same views as I do. And it happened. Uh, it happened. Uh, eventually, I got a lot of people that are, there's a lady in Somerset West uh, uh, that bought probably 10 or 15 of my pieces in the past year, uh, just for her house. And, and there's one example of, of someone that shares this, the same, um, how can I say it? the same visual viewpoint yeah. that I do? It's the same with music. It's some not every everyone likes rap music, mm -hmm. for instance. And uh, you don't take it personally if you make rap music. You don't take it personally if there's some people that doesn't like your music. But uh, cherish the, cherish those ones that do like your music. Uh, it's basically the same. Yeah, I think that's a very um great uh, path or the great uh, level that you get on where you realize that that would not be for everyone you know that your art yeah. is is would be for some people but not for everyone 
I think I yeah. understand that it, it can be a difficult, um, difficult to get there, you know? Yeah, yeah. it is difficult. Uh, but the sooner you get there, the better. The better, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But tell me, there's a blue, a light blue painting at the back of you that I see. Um, can you tell me about that one? Uh, this this lady here. Yeah, that lady. Uh, yeah. Yes, she is a lady that works at my boys, uh, my son's school. Mm -hmm. um, she takes care of her, and her name is Carlin. Uh, she's a... Uh, I don't know, Malaysian, Cape Malaysian lady. And uh, she's got this beautiful features. Um, and I used her for to model for me for this painting. And but I didn't paint from photographs or from life. Uh, what I did was I, uh, I took some photos, of course, and then I did some sketches, uh, studies, and then I've worked only from my studies. So I kind of idealize the painting and where she walks in this kind of a, um, a uh, what do you call it? Um, it's a, you know, a very shallow water. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pond, like a yeah, pond. Like a pond, yeah. yeah. It's kind of a misty pond, yeah. So mm -hmm. she was the inspiration for this painting, uh, Carl, and I've actually done a few paintings of her. That's beautiful, and and oh, so thanks. does she know that that you've um as she seen yeah. that she hasn't seen this one yet. Okay. Um, I've invited her a few times to come over, uh, okay. but when the time is right, I'll just let her come over and come yeah. see it. Uh, I think <laughs> she saw saw photos of it and she freaked out completely. Really? Yeah, oh, I know it's, yeah. And this, your right hand side there is a young. This what? is my wife uh, yeah. i painted i did this painting uh, probably three years ago mm -hmm. um i called it the narcissist news yeah it's, uh, so she modeled she modeled for this painting um and i did it for a competition which mm -hmm. was rejected oh I see. so but i kept the painting i like it uh, it's uh, i don't i haven't put a price on it um it's hanging here but yeah it's a it's one of those deep deeper pieces i do a lot of uh, pieces that uh, connects emotionally with someone and this was one of those pieces that connected a lot with me so it's something i won't sell it's it hangs in my house uh but yeah she was the model of this painting amazing and the narcissist news Mm -hmm. And it's so con contrasting to the other one that that I yeah. find so fascinating. Yeah, yeah. This is more of a classical, uh, has more of a classical texture. Where this one has more of of a impressionist impressionistic yeah. feeling to it. But I, the the method I use is basically the same. It's just the the brush strokes is a little bit more loose, or and this one is a bit more tight. Oh, I see. So, and do you paint also, oh, I mean, can you see over the years, your paintings, um, how your mood changed or how your, your mood was at that time? Can you yes. identify that? Well, I personally can't completely mm -hmm. identify that because uh, it was a lot of up and downs. Maybe you can see that in my work. Uh, a lot of practice, a, a lot of failure. Uh, I mean, I'm sure you can see that, but that is that is something I leave for for the experts one day. They oh, can decide okay. what what. I just I just painted. I just enjoyed the painting process, and uh, what I can see is that, that, uh, that how much I've improved, of course, because uh, I do have. Um, files and files of sketches and and uh, paintings and i can see how i've improved because you don't always see that immediately it takes years before you realize wow look at how bad i've painted back then and how controlled i am now at the moment so um so that's something that i can observe well i think i also sometimes talk to be artists the way they say 
if they look at their first work, and it's not necessarily the uh, just painting, but it's also musicians saying that when they listen to first recordings, you know, and later recordings, but I think those first recordings or the first works are so important because you cannot see where you've gone to if you can't yes. take back to that. So I think that's yeah, no, it's, important. It's, yeah. it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same. Uh, painting is, I, I always uh, uh, measure my artworks with, with um, sport or music. It's the best way to explain the paintings exactly the same. Yeah. yeah. But now, Sebastian, what is what are your wishes for the future? Well, I don't have much because I'm quite happy with what I have and uh, what I've become. Um, I would just wish to keep on painting because uh, that is something that I can't always guarantee. Um, mm. I can only wish to keep on painting for the future because, you know, digital art these days takes over, even though I, I firmly believe that, uh, handmade things will always, yeah. will always stay in market. Um, besides that, I hope that I could, uh, keep my clients satisfied or I could, you know, I could, I could, I could keep, um, um, what is the word? I could just keep selling my work. So I, in yeah. order for me to keep on painting, cause that is, uh, that is something that I always worry about. Mm. Yeah. But, yeah. But, um, would you also teach art? I've considered it. I've, uh, had a few, uh, artists that have asked me, how do I do my work? If that is still a question I am battling with. I do have a Patreon site where I would now and again, when I have time, uh, load a uncut video of my whole process of painting. Um, I'm still working on the Patreon thing because it's, it's something that, uh, once again, I have to learn from failure. You know, it's, oh, yeah. I saw, yeah. I saw the software of the, the, so the platform and I tried it out. So. I have to tweak it a little bit, but there is some videos of my process, mm. but teaching one-on-one, -on -one, you know, it's uh, uh, up and down with that question. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But it was so lovely to talk to you, Sebastian, and I'm so intrigued with your work. And like I say, I, I hope people follow you on Instagram as well to see what you're doing. Um, yeah yeah and, and um, well thank you thank you for the for this interview this lovely conversation we had it's a really yeah. an honor it's, and we should do it more <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's very very i'm very glad we could talk but now i have one last question for you all right so tell me um do you have a favorite coffee shop or restaurant in the area where you go and um drink your coffee well you know, I'm an avid coffee drinker. I drink about 22 cups a day. Really? <laughs> maybe more. Um, I do have a coffee shop here that I uh, visit frequently when I have time. But like I say, this is it, where I stay. It's it's a, a small town. So there isn't, it's not like Stellenbosch. Have you ever been to Stellenbosch? Yeah, yeah. Well, when I stayed in Stellenbosch, coffee shop that I've visited every morning and every afternoon yeah. uh, where I stay now it's a bit far from town so I, I can't always so go can't just to town in. even yeah. though even though I would wish to do that um, but there is yeah. a coffee shop that we frequent that I frequently go to um, but I can't <laughs> I can't get on the name at the moment <laughs> okay <laughs> but the coffee shops coffee shops is definitely the place for me to go find inspiration. Oh, okay. Oh yes. Oh well, yes. Uh, well, yeah. um, uh, as long as you drink coffee, I think that's great. Yeah. <laughs> no, I always drink coffee. Uh, it's the only thing I think. I think it's the only thing apart from my art that I'm addicted to. 
Oh, is it? So <laughs> I have to I have to stop a little bit. <laughs> oh, okay. But um, but you live in you live in Friedenau. Friedenberg. Oh, Friedenberg. Okay. Yeah, it's so, like the center town of the West Coast. Uh, you know, okay. Langebahn and Paternoster and mm. Feldhof. It's it's all towns around Friedenberg. So everyone comes to Friedenberg, but it's still oh. a, a small town now yeah, mm. compared to Stellenbosch or Cape Town. Mm. Yeah. But that's amazing. But okay, so whenever if somebody <laughs> we, uh, visits uh, Friedenberg, there is a coffee shop. Oh yes, of there, there yeah, is definitely okay. a coffee shop. It's just uh, at the mall. You have to walk quite far to get there. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But Sebastian, have a lovely afternoon, and um, I, it you was too. so lovely talking to you. Yeah, well, to you too. Thank you very much once again. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.